You know what? This is the second time in a row that I've done this with my microphone not being turned on. And I apologize. Uh, doing a Pastor Dale when he doesn't turn his microphone on when he's going, when he's getting ready to preach. Well, anyway, we are continuing our series, uh, Vital Signs of a Healthy Believer. This Sunday, Pastor Dana ministered, and it was about Thanksgiving. And it was a, it, I, I tell you, Pastor Dana is one of my uh, favorite female preachers. I love listening to her preach. She preaches from her heart. I know that she spent time in the presence of God talking to him about this. And he just, you know, her time in his presence begins to overflow when she ministers. And I just love that. So she was talking about vital signs of a healthy believer. And one of the vital signs of a healthy believer is thanksgiving. When we give thanks, it is a sign of our gratitude, not only to God, but we recognize his faithfulness in our life. Now, in 1 Thessalonians chapter uh, 5, verse 18, it says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So if you have any doubt whatsoever about being in the will of God, if you begin to give thanks to God, you will step right into the perfect will of God. And I love that because sometimes you can say, man, God, am I really doing your will? God, is this really what you want me to do? Well, if you're doubting whether or not you're in the will of God, you can always begin to thank him because that puts you in the middle of his will. Now, it didn't say give thanks for everything. It said give thanks in everything. And that's important because there's some things that we don't thank God for. We don't thank God for a storm. We thank God he's going to bring us through the storm. We thank God that he's already got our back. So if you don't know what to thank God for, I'm going to give you three things to thank God for. And Pastor Dana talked about these three things at the very beginning of her sermon. She talked about that we could give thanks to God for what he has done, to give thanks to God for what he is doing, and to give thanks to God for what he'll do in our future. So in, a, in a Ephesians, so, so we'll look at what he has done. And th if you can just get a hold of these three things and begin to give thanks to God for these things, I'm telling you, it'll change your whole perspective. It'll change everything around you. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4, it says, because, talking about God, because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive together with Christ, when he, when we were ra or, or made us alive together with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions, the number one thing that you can give thanks to God for is that even when you were dead in your sins and transgressions, God made you alive in Christ Jesus. He didn't stop there. It says, "It is by grace you have been saved." And God, in verse six, says, "And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms." Now here's God, who is rich in mercy who loved us with his great love, made us alive together, even when we were dead in our sins and transgressions, made us alive together and seated us together with Christ Jesus when he raised him from the dead. Man, I tell you, that's, to me, that is awesome. To me, that is just awesome, awesome, awesome. Because we, we, we were dead, now we're alive. I can give thanks to God because I'm seated with Christ. Not only am I seated with him, but I've been raised to a new life in God. I've been raised to a new life in Christ. Now, here we go. Another one. Another thing that you can give thanks for is for what God is doing for you right now. Or you can say what God is doing in you right now. Well, you may think that God's not doing anything. Well, I don't feel God moving. I don't feel God working. But the word of God tells us that he is always at work in us. It, it said, one translation says that God is all the while at work in you, both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. And the New Living Translation says it this way, and this is in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. For God is working in you. That is present tense. For God is working in you. He, he isn't going to work in you. He is currently working in you. And it says, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Now look, remember what the, our scripture, one of the scriptures I read was that it is God's will in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. His will is always pleasing. His good, pleasant, pleasant and perfect will. Pleasing and perfect will according to Romans chapter uh, 12 verse 2. Here it says, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. 
He's even given you the power to give thanks because it pleases God to give thanks. So then the, the next thing here we can look at is that that in for what he's going to do for our future because God has a plan for our future. And, and I'm telling you, that ought to excite everybody. The minute that I got, a, I, I got the revelation that God had a plan for my life, it transformed my thinking that where I looked at life as something that was a dead end and it changed it from a dead end to a hopeful expectation, a hopeful future. Now, in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, it says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Now, think about that. Think about that for a minute. He says, I, I, God says, I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Man, I tell you, when I got a hold of that, I was asking God, God, what is your will for my life? And I read this scripture out of Jeremiah chapter 29, and I mean, it set me on fire because I no longer saw my life as meaningless or purposeless, but God's got a plan for me. He's got a purpose for me. So let's look at this. We've got three areas to give thanks in automatically. We can give thanks for what God has done for us. So, because we, we he raised us up with Christ, we were dead, but he made us alive. We can give God thanks for what he's doing in us because he's all the while at work in us, both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. He is he gives us the desire to please him, to do his will, and he's also got a future plan for us, what he's doing for us in the future. So, those three areas we can always constantly give thanks every every minute, every everything you can think of. It, it, it's, it pales in comparison to these three things that you can give God thanks for in your life. And I tell you, if you start learning to practice this and start learning to do this, it'll change everything around you. It'll change your attitude. It'll change how you see the things of God. It'll change what people see around you and in you. Well, that's all the time that I have for tonight. I want to thank everybody for joining. I apologize for my sound issues at first, uh, but God bless you and have a great evening.